immediately. Uh, if you hear something weird, like licking sounds, that's because Charlie's over there licking his paw. He's made it a hobby of his. Also, the camera angle's weird. The phone's charging, and the charge port is on my is on my left hand side. So the camera, instead of being on the top left, I now have to look down here, which looks like it's a, it's the center of the screen. But for me, it's like bottom right corner of the phone. Um, so if I if I intend to look up, that that's why. Uh, so hey, it's it's been a minute since I made a video. And, uh, it's for a good reason. Uh, I've always stood by the fact that I make these videos, or like these, specifically like these videos, like late at night, it's actually like around 3 in the morning. Um, I, I make these videos with the, uh, with the intent to kind of declutter my mind a little bit, you know, and sometimes... Sometimes there's just some things that go on inside your head that uh, kind of stay there for a while, and then you then you think about it, and then it kind of ruins your day. Um, I haven't made a video in a while because I haven't been feeling shitty for like the past few months. If you know what I mean, I make these videos. I don't know how often I've said this, but I know I've said it before. But these videos are are meant as like some sort of like coping mechanism or, or something like just a way for me to kind of like a diary but at the same time not because a diary is meant to be like private you know but but like a diary these videos are meant so that i can express what's going on in my head and uh not necessarily like, you know, like, here's why I feel bad type thing, but just, you know, just kind of just say stuff until something comes out, you know, until, until I stop feeling shitty, which is, which is often the reason why these videos tend to go on for very long. Speaking of which, I should probably get rid of some of these videos because now I have a time limit on these videos. Yeah, a lot's been going on since the last time I turned on this camera at, like, in the morning, and, uh, <laughs> something I've never had an easy time coming to terms with was something that I heard as a joke in a children's cartoon a long, long time ago. It was in an episode of Fairly Odd Parents, where they had, like, Mr. Rogers, you know, Mr. Rogers come in saying, like, it's okay to be sad, and, you know, for years it is like, it's a joke, but at the same time, you know, the more you grow up, the more weight it has, you know, the idea is that, yes, it is okay to be sad. And I've had a hard time grasping that as a reality, you know, like, emotions, I feel, are reactive of your surroundings, and... Being sad for no reason just never really made sense to me. Like, there's gotta be, like, a cause to this effect. And I still believe that. But sometimes the cause might not be so apparent. And in looking for the cause, uh, we tend to frustrate ourselves. Because it's not, you know, like, being sad, uh... You kind of want to know why. <laughs> you know, you want to have a reason to be sad. And when you don't have a reason to be sad, you kind of just... You, you frustrate yourself. You get, you get emotional, which makes you more sad. And then it becomes this cyclical pattern. And it all stems from, I think, just plain old overthinking. But that was never really a satisfying answer for me. I, I never, I was never content with the idea that thinking too much can cause you to draw so many negative conclusions about the world around you that it just affects you to a point where you just say, 
All right. I don't want to. I don't want to think about this anymore because it makes me sad. You know, it, it, it just even thinking about possibilities makes me sad. But that's human nature, I think, to think about the options we have. There's a reason why those Telltale video games are really fun. There's a reason why player choice is, is a recurring theme in video games. You know, there's a reason why those things are popular. Because a lot of people, actually many people, if not everyone, is very opinionated. And when you play a game that asks you for an opinion of like how you should change or alter, even just a line, you know, uh, in a video game, you know, having the ability to do that, you know, people like that. But not just because, you know, we're able to give our own input in the game, but also because it's a video game, there's no real consequences. So we're able to go back and see what choices that, see the choices that we didn't make the first time around and see how they would have turned out, you know. There's something very, um, not therapeutic, what's the word for it, uh, satisfying? Yeah, there's something very satisfying to the idea of being able to redo decisions you made. It's not final like it is in real life. And... You know, sometimes I run this train and I, I, I go somewhere with it, but then I run my mouth and now I have no idea where I'm going. So this is where it derails, I think. Uh, I don't know. I, I like to think that I make sense from time to time, but just being able to, to say out loud, I guess what I mean what I'm able to say without being judged about it, you know, because there's something, there's something very hard about saying what's on your mind, uh, to people around you, you know, even people that care about you, you know, people who have said that they will support you, um, there's, there's something hard admitting to them that there's something wrong, because, you know, because of the fact that you care about this person, or these people, you don't want them to worry about you, and at the same time, you don't want to sound like, you know, you, you're crying out for help, you know. That's the paradox, I think, not paradox, it's the dilemma, I guess. Uh, well, it's kind of like a paradox, you know. You have these problems, and you want to tell someone, but your choices are either people you know, and people you don't know. And the problem with people that you don't know is they're not going to treat you very seriously. I mean, they might be, you know, there's a good chance they might be human enough to respond in such a way that they'll be um, em empathic, em empathetic, what's the word for it? I don't know how you pronounce that word. Um, they'll, they'll be able to empathize with what you're saying and they will be able to be supportive you know, to a certain extent, you know, as much of a, as much as a stranger could be. On the other hand, uh, it's not warm enough, you know? I mean, if a complete stranger came up to me and, and told me all of their grievances, things that made them sad, you know, I'd do my best to be consoling, but I can only do so from an outsider's perspective, because I don't know this person, you know, maybe they're really shitty, and maybe they deserved it, but I'll never know. At the same time, you know, what if they weren't, what if they didn't deserve it, you know, how am I going to judge that? So I have to keep myself at a relative distance from whatever it is that they're going through. I can't be too into it, you know what I mean? I can't. I can't put myself in that position too deep and for too long or else, you know, I can't get involved past being a stranger, you know. And then there's, there's talking to people that you do know, you know. And the problem with that is, you know, you, you have to be careful about what you say to these people. Because, you know, these are people that you care about, you know. 
Sometimes you might say something that kind of slips your mind and you don't really think about it. But then they, then they do, you know. Sometimes things that you say and then things that you don't say have an effect on the people around you. Because, because they, some, some people tend to dwell on things. I am one of those people that tend to dwell on things. I do it a lot, I know. My girlfriend tells me to not overthink so much. And I try not to, but it's just, it's just my human nature is to think. That's what I do. Um, think to the point that I ruin things for myself, you know? Uh, so she just, she just constantly reminds me not to, not to worry. And so I try to do that. But that's, that's not the case for everyone, you know? Not everyone can be as, uh, hard cut like that. Um, some people are more like, well, a lot of people are more like me where they, they tend to dwell on this type of stuff. You know, if a person that I knew came up to me and told me about their grievances, you know, I'd be thinking about the, thinking about it the next day, depending on their relation to me. If it was someone I didn't particularly care about, maybe, maybe I'd give it a, like a think, maybe, I'll give it a think, you know, but anything past like a day or two, it's probably not, you know, then there's a... There's the stuff that you say to people. There's the stuff that you hear from people. And people will think about that. You know, sometimes things might slip out. Sometimes uh, things might not slip out. How do I phrase this? You know, sometimes, sometimes you talk to a friend and then they say something very, very serious. And then you have to gauge whether or not they're joking. And then say you're talking to a different person, and then you want them to say something, and then they end up not doing so. And then you think about it, and you go, well, they didn't have to say that, but it would have been really nice if they did. You know, if they had said something differently, instead of the thing that they actually said, but they didn't. So now you're thinking, what does that mean? And sometimes it means nothing. Most of the time it means nothing. But for people like me... I have to think about this type of stuff because it's just in my nature, and I, that's, that's probably the reason why this video exists. It's like 3.10, I'm gonna sign off, so I hope I don't make another video like this in a long while, you know. I don't remember being like, like so happy for so long. It felt great, you know, while lasting, and it's still going here. Not not to say that I'm like completely like down in the dumps. I'm saying like, you know, there was like a streak for like two, maybe three months. Two months, all right. There was like there was like a straight two months where just like nothing was wrong. Absolutely nothing was wrong, you know, and then. Uh, then you start to think about some some stuff, and then you know you over you overthink it, and then and then the happiness kind of dissipates. It's still there, but it's not quite as strong, and so I stop counting it in the streak because it's like happiness should be just happiness, not happiness with a side of anxiety, you know. Once that happens, uh, I don't really count that as complete happiness. It's got a change that's got to be made, you know. There's a change that's got to be made. I just don't know what. And that's the frustrating thing, you know. But, I don't know. I'm going to not think about this for a little while. And hopefully... I won't see everyone very soon. Or actually, you know, how about how about the next time I, I upload a video? I hope it's something fun. Uh, 
if you go to my channel, uh, you can see my last two videos were from the Resident Evil 7 video, a demo, sorry, the Resident Evil 7 demo. And at that point in time, people have still not figured out what the dummy thing is, and I kind of dropped off. So, maybe they have found out. Maybe. I'll go, I'll go check right now, actually, after I make this video, after I upload it. I'm gonna go check some forms and see if they did it. And if they did, maybe I'll upload something tomorrow. But uh, if not, well, I guess won't know. Until then, I hope everyone has a fantastic day. I hope everyone will have a fantastic day. And uh, remember, even though it's said as a joke in a children's cartoon, uh, it is okay to be sad. It's okay not to know why you're sad. Um, don't feel like you had to validate your emotions. You know, sometimes they just are, and that's a shitty answer, but facts, <laughs> that's life. Uh, I'm gonna go, this video's getting long, alright, goodbye everyone.